Okay, so let's start. Someone asked me for tutoring, and I said that it was only available at MMC, but apparently you do have tutoring at BBC. So I, I took a picture of that, and I, I in, uh, sent you an announcement today. Maybe you do have tutoring at BBC, okay? So if you want to look at that before you go. I don't know, because usually tutoring is done by graduate students, so I don't know if the graduate students will come here, but maybe they will. So it was just a parenthesis. Just to review before we go to free fall, if the, velocity, the, the thing that you have to remember is if the velocity is positive, that means it's moving to the... Right, very good, but it's... Negative, it's moving to the left. Now, the acceleration is not the same thing. If both the velocity and the acceleration have the same sign, so velocity and acceleration are both positive, or acceleration and velocity are both negative, that means it's speeding up. If they have opposite sign, so it means something is moving to the right, but there is a force pulling to the left, so acceleration is negative, velocity is positive, so that means it's slowing down. Could be the opposite, right? You are moving to the left, there is a force pulling to the right, so acceleration is positive, velocity is negative, then it's slowing down. Is that clear? The other thing I want to make it clear is that when you are analyzing, uh, uh, analyzing a graph, you have to look at the axis here. So if you have position versus time, if you have position versus time, which is not the case here, but if you, if you have position versus time, the slope, it's going to be the velocity, right? But if you have Velocity versus time, the slope is acceleration. Very good. But if you have position versus time and you have a horizontal line, that means it's not moving. But if you have velocity versus time and you have a horizontal line, it means it's moving, but it's moving at a constant velocity. You understand? Okay. So now we go, we are still in 1D, and we're going to use the same kinematics equation, but now it's, it's going up or down. So we, we're going to look at objects in free fall. Free fall meaning we are neglecting air resistance. In those cases, the acceleration is always negative 10. So here you just have the magnitude but it's always negative 10 meter per second per second. If, if you want to convert that into miles per hour, that will be about 22 miles per hour per second or about 32 feet per second per second. Acceleration due to gravity is always negative and never, never, ever equal to zero because gravity does not give up on you, okay? It doesn't say, oh, I'm getting tired, okay? Go your own way in space. I'm not going to pull on you anymore, right? So there is always gravity pulling down. So there is always a negative acceleration when something is falling or if something is thrown, you know, in the air, go up and down. Is that clear? And then we've seen that Galileo Galilei, because he did all those experiments with gravity, and I, I think we didn't have time to discuss that, did we? Okay, so he found out that regardless of the mass, any object falls of, at the same rate. So if you go to the moon, 
and you have an elephant in one hand and you have a leopard gecko on the other hand and you drop them from the same height, they will reach the ground at the same time. And they will have the same acceleration. That is if we neglect air resistance, okay? So how did we do that? So Galileo was really the first one to base his findings not on religion or philosophy or whatever the Greek used to say. He, he founded his uh, uh, laws to describe nature on experiments, okay, on observations. So the story goes that he went up the Peace Tower and dropped like a bowling ball or a tennis ball. I don't know if they were playing tennis at the time, but that's not true because at the time he didn't have stopwatch that would be very hard to measure the time precisely. So what he did, and that was the genius of Galileo, he built what we call inclined plane. Okay, so this is an inclined plane, exactly the same that Galileo used. And it's the same thing. Something is falling down, rolling down, so it's still acted upon by gravity. We neglect friction, we neglect air resistance, but gravity is diluted. But it's going to be exactly the same relationship between the position and the time. So the relationship will be exactly the same, right? Except the acceleration will be smaller. We can even do the math and uh, we, we'll, we'll see that in the next unit. You can even show that. What do you think the acceleration will depend on given an inclined plane? So if your inclined plane is just straight up, what's going to be the acceleration? Now, if, if you take the inclined plane and you make it like this and you drop something, Gravity, right, is going to be negative 10. As you make the slope more gentle, the acceleration will decrease, right? So it will depend on what? So we neglect friction. The angle, put the angle, right? So it, it will depend on that angle here. Here you have an angle, here. The acceleration of an object that you drop from here, you let go from here, so here the velocity equals zero, and then the velocity is going to increase, increase, it's going to speed up, you know, toward the bottom. The acceleration will be g, which is 10 meter per second per second in magnitude times sine of the angle, right? So if you, maybe you know trig sine 90, how much is a sine 90 degrees? One. So, of course, if, if you take your inclined plane and you make it straight up, it's, the acceleration will be gravity. So the idea was to make it easier to measure the time and the position without stopwatch at the time. And then what he did, the super smart, here you have little what? What, what do you think this is here? Little what? Bells, right? So it, it had little bells here. And this, this could slide up and down. And he moved those gates. So they are like the ancestors of the photo gates that you're going to use in lab. Okay? They didn't have photo gates. Instead of having photo gates, he, he used bells. And he moved them in such a way that the time between those two here will be one second, okay? So it will take one second for the ball to go from here to there. So he will move the ball up and down, such as during one second, the, the, the rolling ball will, uh, will be between those two balls. Do you understand? So let me ask you something. How was he able to find the time? How was he able to measure very accurately one second? And if you look carefully at that picture, you could see what, what he used. Somewhere. 
There is no stopwatch. There is something that you use to measure the time. There is no clock at the time of uh, Galileo. So look at the picture. Do you see something that he could have been using? Something that is uh, very regular. So he, okay, so that's a good good idea. He, he could have used a metronome. Okay, that that could have been uh, one way. I don't know if they had metronome at the time. Probably. So take a, a metronome and put it upside down. Kind of. Do you see something here? A pendulum. He used a pendulum. How smart that is. So Galileo, when he was 17 years old, he found that you, you, there is a relationship between the length of the pendulum and the time it takes to go back and forward, or back and forth, right? So if you take a pendulum, which is just a string, it's a very easy, cheap experiment to do. That's why they are doing in high school. You know, it doesn't cost anything. A string and some nuts here. And you make the string exactly 25 centimeters. 25 centimeters, right? The time it takes to go forth and back, back and forth is just one second. Isn't that smart? So you have the pendulum attached here. That will swing back and forth. That will take one second. And then he moved the bell here in such a way that it was always one second between here and there, one second between here and there. And, and um, the ball here was moving faster and faster. Do you understand? How smart that is. Very smart. So what, 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 did, he uh, did, what did he find out? Let's see what he found out. He found out that the distance here, let's say, let's call that in a unit of distance. I don't know if it was inches, centimeters, I'm not sure what they were using at the time, but that was one unit of distance. Between here and there, he found out that was three units of distance, right? What is coming next? What do you think? Five units of distance, right? Between here and there, how much? Seven. Wow, it's like someone or something, you know, caught the law of nature with math. So one, three, five, seven, one, ten. What comes next? Nine. So after one second, maybe it was going one inch, two seconds, three inch. So that was each time the delta x or, or the distance covered. So let's. So this is called the odd numbers that. Galileo, Galileo find out. So now let's make a table. The time elapsed and the total displacement. I'm going to call that delta x. Total displacement. So at t equals zero, no displacement at all because you let go here. At t equals one, displacement is one. What about at t equals two? What's the total displacement? Four between here and there, from the beginning. Four, very good. What about three seconds? Nine, very good. After four seconds, it's going to be what? Very good. After five seconds? 25, very good. So what's the relationship between the time elapsed and the total distance covered? You square it, very good, that's what he found out. He found out that if you do have a constant acceleration, and if you start from rest, then the total displacement is gonna proportional, be proportional to the time square. That was his finding. That was the very big finding upon which uh, Newton could build up. Because then Newton invented calculus because he was bored. You know, it was the black plague. Every student was sent home. Remind you of something, you know. And he, he got bored and invented calculus. Huh? Isn't that something? Okay. So anyway, so what, what kind of graph do I get? Very good, a parabola. That was the finding of Galileo. Huh? Genius, right? Very smart.
Okay, so uh, nothing new in that unit. We are still going to use the kinematics equation, the big phi, if you want to call it, except now, except now, instead of going uh, right to left, the, the object is going to be up or down, right? So just, uh, oh, forgot to tell you. Did I tell you that it's very important to do your homework without looking at the solution? That's why I give two attempts. I can give extension if you want, but I, I, I like to have deadline. So don't look at the solution. If you don't look at the solution and you really wait and wait and wait before picking, then the test will be a fresh breeze. Okay, it's going to be so easy because you have done the work before. And did I tell you that you need a textbook? You really need a textbook, okay? Because you have solved problem, you can read over, you know, you can get all the, the if you take the textbook from Pearson, then you have tutorials embedded in your canvas. But you don't have to. If you have an older edition, that's fine. You know, since Newton, the physics is the same, okay? Nothing new. I mean, physics, classical physics, of course. So what is the equation? So I'm just reminding you, displacement equals initial velocity along the x times t plus one half a t squared, right? And then we have that the average velocity, sometimes it's useful, equals the total displacement over the time elapsed. And sometimes it's useful to say that it's one half initial velocity plus final velocity divided by two, so same thing. Then we have that the final velocity increases at the rate of the acceleration. Right? It's a rate. It's, it's a slope. You see, you, you recognize y equals mx plus b. And then we have also the equation, which is very useful. Final speed equals initial speed plus 2a delta x. Is that clear? So now for up and down, that we call a free fall, now the acceleration is always negative 10. Actually, it's supposed to be negative 9.8. For, for the problems that I give, you know, from the book, uh, then you can take negative 9.8. In class, we can take negative 10 because it makes easier. The notation is g. That's the acceleration due to gravity. And that's going to be in magnitude. So it's really negative 9.8. G is the notation for the magnitude. Is that clear? And now we're going to go up and down. So you, you have always have to choose an origin. Up is plus, down is minus, unless you want to take things upside down, which you are free to do as long as you are consistent. We're going to have the same equation. So we're going to have delta Y equals initial velocity along the Y, T, so what should I have here? One half of g, but g is, it's, it's going to be the acceleration is negative 10. So one half of 10 is 5. So we're going to have a minus 5t squared. Agree? That's free fall. And then we're going to have the same thing here. And then we have the final velocity equals Initial velocity, what should I have here? Negative, not negative 10, acceleration is negative 10, so it's going to be negative. Why 5? 5 is half of 10, right? So substitute A by negative 10, so what do you get? Negative 10, T. You take those same equations, you replace X by Y, and you replace A by negative 10. Is that hard? Mm -hmm. It's hard? No, no you, just, you just say A equals negative 10. That's it, right? And you plug negative 10, you substitute A for negative 10, right? 
you really, really have to work out your homework. Very, very, very important. Very important. If you just do it to have the points, you know, it's just 20 points. So it's not going to help you. You really have to do your homework and go over the textbooks. I, I understand that I have a mix of level, okay? Some people say, oh, it's too easy. She's repeating the same thing 10 times. And some other people will say, oh, I'm totally lost. You cannot be lost if you do your homework. What about here? What do I get? V final square equals initial square plus 210, what? Very good, negative 10. You replace delta x by delta y. Very good, don't be shy, okay? So V f square equals V zero square. Two times negative 10 is gonna be negative 20. And I have a all new set of equation. It's the same one, except A equals negative 10. Got that? And then you, you do drawing, you plug in, and that's it. Uh, there is so, no, some, nothing new. If you find it uh, challenging, it's because you didn't do your homework yet. So catch up. I, I just want to show you a video. So, so that was on the moon. And he took a hammer and a feather. He dropped them from the same height. And as expected, it reached the ground at the same time. Uh, Jim, we copied a uh, both solar wind and uh, penetrometer drum in the ETB. Not quite yet. I haven't put the solar wind in yet, but I will shortly. I want to watch this. Okay. Oh, you have a, a good picture there. Be I've got the... Beautiful picture, Dave. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Uh, Which proves that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. So I, I found this video, of course it's an old video, but it's very cool, it makes the point that if there is no air resistance, regardless of their mass, any, any object will, will have the same acceleration down. Okay, so now I'm going to go over everything I have said. So here you have two situations. You can drop something from rest, right? So it's going to speed up and down. So every second, it's going to cover more and more distance. You can take the origin here. And what's going to happen, those equation, kinematics equation will be as, as, as you have here. Okay, I, I just show you that. Do you understand? Right, so it's the same. I can... I can do it again just to make sure that everyone understands. But it's the same thing. We have, for example, A equals negative 10. So you have delta Y equals initial velocity plus one half A T squared. Nothing new under the sun. That's the same equation we have seen playing with except I have replaced delta x by delta y. So now delta y, you drop from rest, so that's going to be 0, equals 1 half, the acceleration is negative 10 t squared. So delta y equals half of negative 10 is negative 5 t squared. Okay? That's where it comes from.
Now, you can do something like this. We have seen that before. You throw something in the air. So on the way up, what's happening? Is it slowing down or speeding up? Slowing down, very good. Gravity is always negative 10. At the top, what's happening? Stop, so velocity is... Can I say that the acceleration is zero? No, right? And on the way down, it's going to what? Speed up or slow down? Speed up. And the velocity will be negative, and acceleration is still negative 10. Okay, so very good. So you, you have those equations here, except that, of course, if you want something to go up, you need to give some initial velocity. Does it make sense? Okay, so let's take an example here. Uh, I have an app, but um, you drop something from a tower, you see it's going to speed up, right? So, can, can you just, to make sure that everyone is on page, can you, can you fill that table here? Here, that means the velocity as a function of time and the displacement. So I want to emphasize the following. When you are doing a problem, first you're doing a drawing. Okay, first thing you are drawing. Second thing, you are deciding where is the origin, where is your x-axis, and where is your y-axis. So you can decide that down is negative and up is positive. Okay. When you are finding the displacement, you always, you know, have the initial position, and then somewhere here you have the final position. And then you connect both. So in physics, remember, displacement is a vector, so you connect the starting point to the ending point, okay? So let's do that together. At t equals zero, velocity is zero. Okay, you drop. At one second, what's the velocity? Negative 10. So it's speeding up at a rate of 10 meters per second. So it's, it's going faster by 10 every second. At two seconds, how fast it's going? Negative, negative 20. At three seconds, how fast is going? Negative 30. At four seconds, how fast is going? Negative 40. You have a line here because for each step in one, you are changing the speed by the same amount, by negative 10. So if you want to make velocity as a function of time. So velocity is zero. And then the slope is negative. So it, it's going to be something like this, right? Negative 10 meter per second per second. So every second you increase, you go faster by 10. Is that clear? Okay, so make sure that... Try to make sure that everyone is on board. Delta y t equals zero. At t equals one, let's let's do that. T equals one. So delta y equals initial velocity is zero. Okay, so that's going to be minus five t squared. Everyone understand why I put a minus five? Because it's one half the acceleration. The acceleration is negative ten. Is that clear? Okay, so after one second, what's the displacement? Negative five, very good. So after one second, you go on top of, I don't know, the library. You drop something. After one second, it will have fallen by five meters. Five meters, about five yards, right? In one second, five yards. One meter is about one yard uh, about so at t equals two uh, 
Very good. Negative uh, 20. 2 times 2 is 4. So negative 20. Okay, so it means after 2 seconds, the displacement, so that means the distance between your starting point and the ending point is negative 20. What about uh, t equals 3? Negative 45, right? At t equals 4, I don't know, my, my multiplication table, you know, at some point, uh, 4, 16, so it's going to be neg negative 5, negative what? 80. Thank you, 80. Okay, so now you get more uh, gut feeling, do you understand? Okay, so it's just we go up and down instead of just going in a straight line. If, um, if you do a graph, Did I tell you that you have to work in a study group that that's going to be very helpful? You go like this, right? Especially in physics, chemistry, biology, you know, any science. Uh, collaborative learning is the best. Because if you teach others, you teach yourself. So you are dropping those spheres here. And this, this is the position as a function of time. So you take the origin here. At t equals 0, it's about 80 meters above the ground. And the parabola, you know, is curving down. That means you have a negative coefficient in front of the t square. What's happening to the slope here of position versus time? So the, it's a parabola. What about the slope? Do you have a, is it sloppy at the beginning? No. So that means the velocity is zero and increasing. But at the beginning, t equals zero it, is zero, right? It's flat. And you see how it gets more sloppier and sloppier and sloppier, right? That means the speed is increasing, okay? And the velocity is uh, if, if you take down as negative, the velocity is going to be negative because it's going down. So the slope is negative because it's going down, but it's increasing at a constant rate. Do you understand? So it's very important if you are in biology, for example, or any science to understand rate of change because in the real life, nothing is static. It has to move, okay? Move as a function of time. So you really have to understand the meaning of slope and rate of change. Oh, since I'm here, I'm going to go back to here. So what's the initial velocity here? 40, okay. And you see it's going up. And then it's going down. Let's do that again because it's fun. You should see that first the velocity is positive, the velocity then is negative. Acceleration is in blue is always same magnitude and down. Boom. Okay. So in green, you have the position. If you take the origin here, you see, the, the, the ball is moving away from home, if you call that home. It reached a maximum, and then it's going back home. Look at the slope. Is the slope decreasing or increasing from here to there? Decreasing. It gets less, less uh, sloppy. And here it's what? It's a flat. Do you want to do ski on the flat? No, right? So the, the slope is zero. So the velocity is zero. Does it make sense? And from here to there, is the slope increasing, decreasing, or staying the same? Increasing. Very good. But the slope is negative, meaning it's moving down. You see how it works? So in blue, so they, they are trying to save space. So they did two graphs on, on the same page. But in blue here, you have the velocity. So it starts at 40, 30, after one second, 20, 10. What's happening here? Stops. 
before it was going up because it's positive. Now it's moving down because it's negative and it's speed up again. Do you understand? So can you can you write the kinematic equation for that object? You have everything. So just the kinematic equation. The initial velocity is 40. So I don't know if I can do... A, see, it, it won't let me... So how can I do that? If I do that, I have those stupid things here. It's fine, I can do it here. Okay. So first of all, you, you want the origin and the X and the Y. So what's happening? You you are you have some momentum here, so the ball here has some velocity to begin with. And it's 40, right? And then it's going to go up. And it's going down. So if you ask your guts, you know, guts know physics. Um, here it's 40, it's going up and then it's going down. What do you think is the final speed? Same, very good. Now this one, one before it hits the ground, before it hits the ground, right? So it's going to be what? Negative 40, right? What about here? What's the velocity here? Zero. So what are the kinematics equations? Displacement will be initial velocity, which is 40t, very good. And then... Negative 5t squared. Very good. You see it makes a parabola curve down. That's why I have a negative here. Is that clear? The velocity, velocity is going to be initial velocity, which is 40. And then what should I put? Minus. Minus. Very good. So minus... Mm, as a function of time, remember the velocity is going to change by minus 10 every second, right? So it's going to be minus 10 t. 10 t. Yeah, does that make sense? So at t equals 0, what's the velocity? 40. At t equals 2, it's going to be what? 20. 20. At t equals 3, it's going to be 10. At t equals 4, 0. Here, at t equals 4 seconds, it's going to be 0. At t equals 6, uh, uh, 5, 5, sorry. Very good, negative 10. And at t equals 6, negative 20, and negative uh, t equals 7, negative 40. Isn't that cool? So everything is symmetric. So if, uh, did I do a mistake? Oh, because I'm, uh, I skip one. So here it should be t equals 8, thank you. Uh, negative 30 should be here at t equals 7 seconds. Okay, so everything is symmetric. That means if you take the same height, if you take the same height, then the velocity will be the same, except one is up and the other one is down. Is that clear? Now, let's take, let's consider the whole motion, up and down. Are you with me? So the flight, it's called the flight. So that means you, 
when you are considering a motion, you always put the initial and then final. So here, initial and final, they are the same, right? Because you, it's coming back in your hand. So the displacement is what? Right, good. Displacement equals zero. Okay, because it's coming back to the same height, yes? Let's see what do I get if I put delta y equals zero here. I'm going to have zero equals 40t minus 5t squared. Solve that for t. So you have two solutions. You have t equals zero, and then you have t equals... So you have... You crossed out 40. So what can you put here as a time to make it zero? Do you all agree with that? So isn't that amazing? Look, you find a second. That's where we were expecting. So in those kind of problems, you always put your A and then you put your B. If A is the same as B, the displacement is zero. Okay, is that clear? Now, so eight second. How how does it take to go up? Four seconds. You all agree? We did that together. So four seconds to go up. How much to go down? Four seconds. So if you have the flight time, you divide by two. Okay, or if you have the time to go up, you multiply by two and you have the time, the total time of flight. Make, makes sense because if everything is symmetric, yes or no? Okay. Now, how could, could have we found the, just the time to go up? Let's, let's find a, a different way to do it, right? So same thing here. I have like something that I throw at 40 meter per second. So it's going up and then it's going down, but I'm just interested here when it stops. So I'm going to put that my A and that's my B. Okay? So that's going to be, for example, the height, the maximum height, the displacement. Let's find the time it takes to go from here to there. So what do I know? Do I know the initial velocity? 40. Do I have the final velocity here at the top? Zero, very good. So can, can I find the time? So if just use final equals initial minus 10t. So what do you get? Four, do you all find four? Yeah. Okay, it's nothing new. We, we knew that it was four, right? Four to go up, four to go down, right? What's the maximum height? So then I can use that four seconds, yes? So delta y equals initial velocity minus uh, 5t squared. So plug 4 into that equation to find the height. Yeah. So here, you, it depends what do you consider. What's your starting point? If you start from here, that will be your initial velocity is 40. And if you stop here, the final velocity is zero. So if you if you find from the top to the bottom, so then it's the opposite. No, no, here I'm showing you start here and you finish here. Yeah, the final velocity is zero. Oh, I did a mistake. Thank you. 
I did the opposite. So zero is the final, initial is 40 minus 10 T. So T equals four seconds. If uh, you write, thank you, if, if you go from top to bottom, so initial is zero and final will be minus 40. We're going to see that in more details. I'm just giving you like, a, so delta Y is going to be what? 40 times 4 minus 5. 4 times 4 is 16. So it's going to be what? 80 meters. Okay? Is that clear? Okay, so here is the same thing. You are throwing something up. At t equals zero, there is no displacement, of course. And the initial velocity is 20. After one second, what's the velocity? 10. So any time something is, you know, in the air, it's losing 10 every second. It's minus 10 every second, right? So here it's 10. What about after t equals 2? 0. After another second, it's going to be negative 10. Very good. And then four seconds, it's going to be negative 20. If you consider the all flight, what's going to be the displacement? Zero. Okay, the displacement, you go back to the same place. Okay, it's, it was in your hand, it comes back to your hand, the displacement is zero. Is that clear? Now, if you want to find how high, let's find how high. You can help each other and make, sh make sure you know how to do it. Let's find how high here, the displacement here. So velocity is zero. You, you have different way to do it. So I want to find how high, you know, the, the maximum relative to your hand. No, no, so the final velocity is zero. I want to find the displacement between A and B. So that displacement here, I don't know if I can draw it properly, but that displacement here is delta Y. From the beginning to the end. So delta Y, 20T minus 5T squared. So do we have the time? Two seconds. Oh, you, you, you're right. Someone, someone say, uh, someone say 20, so you're right. So 20 meters, is that clear? Sometimes you have to find the time first, right? So if I find the time first, I say the final speed equals initial speed minus 10t. <coughs> Between A and B, what's the final speed here? Final velocity? 0 equals 40 minus... <coughs> uh, now, why is that 20? Good question. Thank you for asking. Uh, 10 t. So the time equals two seconds. So two seconds to go up, two seconds to go down. So with those problems, the first thing you do, a drawing, 
you decide which way is plus, which way is minus, the acceleration is always negative 10, and then you, you, you have to decide A and B. And you find the displacement, you connect A and B. If A and B, A, B is negative, so it's, it's down, that means displacement is negative. Yeah, so in the air, I automatically use the equation, uh, this this one. So you don't want that to be zero, okay? Because if it's going in the air, that means you give it some momentum to begin with. If you drop something, then you use those equations here because the initial velocity is zero, it starts from rest. The easiest way to do it is down is negative, so if it's moving up, velocity is positive. If it's moving down, velocity is negative. Okay? And um, that, that will be the graph. I think we've seen that graph already. And we did that. Oh, we already did that. Okay, so you, your term... So they, they did the drawing for you. Usually you have to do the drawing and then you do the dressing. That means you put everything you know on, on your sketch, right? So drop from rest, that means the initial velocity equals zero. And then now it's showing you the displacement from the starting point to the ending point, right? And then the time is given. So acceleration is negative 10. Initial velocity is zero. The time is three. And what you want to find, you find the displacement. So let me know what you find. Negative 45? Do you all agree with that? Okay, initial velocity is zero. So minus five, three squared. So you see the displacement is negative. So you have to be very careful with the sign because sometimes if you put a negative instead of positive, that's not good. So A to B, you expect a negative displacement because it's pointing down. Okay? So here, you know, they make things easy for you. They're not supposed to. But mm -hmm. it says how high. So when you see how high, that means that the final velocity is zero. You have to do that on your own. You have to draw uh, which way is plus, which way is minus. Then you, you add some dressing. Okay, so you decide initial velocity is five, final velocity is zero. And you can do the, you, ha you need to find the displacement. And, and here, the time is not given. So maybe we cannot, we don't use the first equation. We use, you know, the last equation? The equation without the time. You go back a few slides. Not this one. OK, 
Okay, this one looks nice. So what do you get? What do you get? 1.25? Okay. So it's the same thing as the X motion. Same, same thing, except you go up and down and the acceleration is negative. So if you, if you did your homework, and I'm sure everyone did, it should not be too hard. So in that position, you have two situations. You have situation A, you throw something in the air, like this, going down. And in this situation, you, you, go, you go like that, right? You throw the thing down, but here they have the same velocity. I mean, the same speed in magnitude. What do you think? So don't look at C, okay? Look at A and B. Which one will have the greater speed when it hits the ground, or, or do they have the same speed when they hit the ground? Same speed, very good, right? Because on, on its way down here, it's, it's going to be in the same situation. It's going to have a negative 30, right? Of course, which one will reach the ground first? B. Make sense? Okay, that that all they, they are too easy. Those those are too easy. Uh, okay, let's do number three. By the way, you have the tutorials right in the So you can you can help each other. So first you have to do a drawing. I don't know how to make a bridge, but Then you decide the origin and which one is plus, which one is minus, zero. And then you do the dressing. So initial velocity is zero, very good. Okay, at t equals zero. It takes 2.3 seconds. And then next thing you do, you decide your initial position and your final position. Uh, what do you get? So ne negative 26. So 5 meters. Okay. So that's a vector. Now, if they ask you the height, 
the height is a scalar, right? So you will say uh, 26.5 meters. Okay, so that's what we call the scalar because it's an app. And that's a vector. It's a displacement. Find the final velocity. So what's the final velocity? Very good. Right, so. And it's speed up. It's going to speed up and down. OK? Uh, no, it's the wrong one. See, here I try to trick you. A bowling ball and a tennis ball are in free fall, so we neglect air resistance. The time... Uh, the height, from the same height, 50 meters. Which one will reach the ground first? Hmm? They will reach at the same time. Very good. They will reach at the same time. Okay, because it does, you, no, nowhere do you have the mass in the equation. So the mass is not to be taken in account so it doesn't matter. They will reach at the same time. So what's uh, what's that time? No. No air resistance. You you have to take a more advanced physics class. Um, no, the time. So the. Start from here. So what's the displacement between here and there? B? 50 or negative 50, right? So we need to find we need to find the time. Uh, yeah, we can use this one, right? If you don't put a negative fifty, we are in trouble because a time square cannot be a negative number. Is that right? So it's about three something. Okay. No, no, you don't. No, no, it will make things much more complicated. Then we get into differential equations. Although we should, so I'm going to lose like from 106 students, I could get like half. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no air resistance. Yeah.
Yes. No air resistance. Never, never, ever. No, but, but we're going to suppose that for this class, there is never air resistance. Because otherwise, the, the equations won't be the same. You cannot choose the same equations. It, it's, a, it's a good question because what's going to happen with air resistance? Okay, let's. Since you ask. Since you ask. Let's see what's happening if you have a resistance. Okay, let's let's do experiment Galileo, but let's add some air resistance now. Which one will be more affected by air resistance? The 10 kilogram or the one kilogram? One kilogram. Let's see what's gonna happen. So the blue one is heavy like a bowling ball doesn't care about resistance and it's still spinning up and down but look what the ping pong ball is doing it starts from zero it starts to speed up at, at a lower and lower rate and what's happening here the velocity is constant so it had it it reach what did it reach? So when you are jumping with a parachute, at some point you are not spinning up anymore and you are moving at a constant speed, right? You have reached terminal velocity. So actually, air resistance will not be too hard. You start with some acceleration, but the acceleration decreases until it gets to zero. And then there is no more acceleration. It's moving down at a constant speed. And we call that the terminal speed. That's why if you have an insect, you know, insect, and you drop the insect, it's not going to hurt itself, right? Because very quickly, it's going to reach terminal speed. If you do that with your cats, you know, I know that cats are supposed to spin and land on their feet. But maybe not a good idea. You know, there was experiment with cats. They say that up, up to the seventh floor, they will be OK. But then, you know, they won't be OK. So but, but don't do that experiment, OK? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I was already here. Okay. Let's try to do this one. Okay, it's a little bit tricky here. See, I try to trick you. Are, are we on Earth? No. So the acceleration, is it negative 10? So it's going to be what? Negative 2. Very good. So now the acceleration is negative 2. So after, f uh, what is it, four seconds, how, how fast it's going? Then do, you, do you all agree with that? And it's going up. So it's, I don't know, it's somewhere here.
So now, how can we find the highest point? So we are in the situation that's A, that's B. So we want to find the delta Y. What, what do we know about that highest point here? Very good, the final velocity equals zero. So you have two ways to do it. You can find the time it takes, and then you use the equation with delta y. Or you can use the vf square equals initial square. So both will work, OK? So you can use this one, or you can do in two steps. Don't stare at the screen, do it. And you can help each other. So, um, 81? Thank you. Did you all find that? Okay, 81. How much time elapse before the ball reach the high point in its flight. So the time it takes to go from here to there, where the final velocity equals zero. So between here and there, how long it takes? Nine seconds, do you all agree with that? Now, how long does it take for the whole flight? Nine to go up, nine to go down, so all together it's gonna be 18 seconds, right? Because every, everything, so time, uh, time for the flight is 18 seconds. So the answer here is 18 seconds. Now, I, I could have used a different way. So let's say I'm only asked to find how long does it take to come back, okay? So just uh, going back here. I know it's 18 seconds. I just want to do it a different way. What's the final velocity, by the way, here? Negative. So it starts with 18, 0. The time, the time it takes from here to there is 9. So that's going to be negative 18, right? If I consider the whole motion, so from A to B, so it means you A equals B, right? So what is delta Y for the flight? So you throw something, it's going up, and then you come back. What is the displacement? Zero, do you all agree? Come back to your hand. Exactly. So delta y equals zero. So let's see what we get if we use the equation delta y equals 18t minus half uh, 2t squared. Do you all agree with that equation? 
Okay, so acceleration is negative two. I put the minus here, but I could have it here, doesn't matter. So delta y equals 18t minus t squared. See what you get if you put delta y equals zero. Try to solve that equation. So zero equals 18t minus t squared. So you get 18. And you get the same thing. Is that clear? Uh, even, even let's do it a, a last way. So at least we, we have the same problem, you know, in all directions, from all angles. From here to there, initial velocity is 18. What is the final velocity? Negative 18. Very good. So if I use the equation final equals initial uh, minus 2t because the acceleration is negative 2. So final is minus 18 equals initial is 18 minus 2t. What do you get for the time? Ah, it's comforting, right? <laughs> if we didn't find 18, that means something is wrong. Okay? Yeah, 20 or 20 or 22, I'm not, I'm not sure, depending. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to do Proctor on computer, so it will be on paper. I'm, I'm, I'm tech up to a one point, so I don't know how to do it. <laughs> and I don't want to learn. I, I learned too many things in my life, that's it. I don't want to learn new things. Yeah, multiple choice. And uh, I will post next week. I have to work on a review. Not a review, but a practice exam. It's not a study guide, but it's a practice exam that will look like the exam. And then you have all the tutorials. OK, help, help each other try to do this one. <laughs> so first thing you do, you, you, you make a drawing. Right? Uh, where do you see grams? Ah. But n usually it's it's gravity now. It's not uh, given. That that's what we want. Yeah. So what can you use here? It's it's coming back to the same place. Five seconds. 
Oh yeah, you can do that if you want. But they want to, yes, you can use that to, to reach the top is five seconds. You can, there are different ways to do it, so you can do that. But they want to find the initial velocity, V sub zero. That's the question, right? So yes, you can, you can use that. If you want to do use that, you can use that. Okay, you can say velo final velocity here is zero. So you can, you can consider from here to there. And you know that the time is five seconds. Then yes, definitely you can do that. Do you understand? Yeah. So you have different ways to do it. You can consider the whole motion. A equals B. Displacement is zero. Or you can consider the motion up. In that case, the, the T up is five seconds. You can do that. So you, if you want, you can start from A and B will be here. You can do that. So if you do that from A to B, the time is five seconds. Okay, you can do that. So in that case, you can say the final velocity equals initial velocity minus 5t. So final velocity is, is what? Well, I, in that case, yeah, but you are not supposed to look at the answer. So, so final velocity is uh, final velocity here. Zero. Initial velocity idk. Uh, times five, you're right. So initial velocity is Do you agree? But because I don't know, someone decided that he wants to uh, instead of taking the all uh, motion they decided to take half of the motion. So if the whole motion is 10 seconds, half of the motion is five seconds. But now you don't have to do that. If you take the whole motion, so if I take the whole motion, so T, T air is 10 seconds. In that case, delta Y equals zero. Okay, displacement is zero. So then I can use the equation zero equals V0 time minus 5t square and, and that means 0 equals V0 minus 5t and you, you will find the same thing. So the idea is to decide which, what is your A, what is your B. If you consider the all motion, so displacement is zero. If you consider half of the motion, then this is your initial position that will be your final position. Okay? Yeah. Why did I did it don't square? Oh no, because you see you have a T here. So I, what, what you can do, I, I'm skipping step, but what you can do here is to factor out the t. Okay. I, I, I don't know. Did I? But someone asked me to reopen, so did I? It's, uh, it's, it's very, very important that you work with some people, right? Because you, 
not everyone have the same skills. Some people are more conceptual, some people are more uh, skilled in math. So it's uh, very hard to study on your own. You really have to find someone to work with. You have different way to do this one. You you can consider from here to there, and then you multiply the time by two, or you can consider from here to there. You can even cheat because you say final velocity is negative 36. You can do, you can use that. Yeah, seven point something. 7.2 is the answer. 7.2 or 7.3 or something like this. 7.2. You you have different way to do it. If you if you want to do a equals b, you can say okay final velocity equals initial minus 10t. That's one way to do it. You have three ways to do it. Final is minus 36. Initial is 36 equals uh, minus 10t, so minus 72 equals minus 10t, so t equals 7.2 seconds. But you don't have to do it this way. You can, you can go from here to there. So you can go down to up. So in that case, Final velocity is zero, initial is 36, minus 10t, so time up is 3.6 seconds. It's going to be twice. Okay? You have different ways to do it, okay? You have three ways. Or you can say from here to there, so A equals B, delta Y equals zero. So you can say zero equals 36T minus 5T squared. And, and uh, you find again, you find again the same thing. So one, two, three, three different things to do the same. Okay? So it's a Tuesday. We're going to do projectile motion. But projectile motion is just working at the same time on two sets of equations. One for free fall and one for a constant velocity. So for Tuesday, it's very important that you digest the free fall thing and, and that you get a textbook if you didn't. It's a combination between free fall and constant velocity because it's doing two things at the same time.